Hey everybody, so we get asked all the time, how do you tow your vehicle? And the short answer is we don't. Um, what we actually do is when we're traveling, I drive the RV and Katie follows behind me in the Jeep. So today we wanted to share with you some of the information we learned that helped us make our decision in the hopes that by the end of this video, you're going to have a better idea of which way is right for you. But first, let's go ahead and dive into the different ways to travel with an extra vehicle. Option number one is four down. And if you're not familiar with four down, it's where your tow vehicle actually has four wheels on the ground. This is the way that Katie and I intended on towing our vehicle, mainly because we read that it's the safest option out there. One of the reasons it is really safe is because as you're towing your vehicle, when you press the brakes in your rig, it actually compresses the brakes on your tow vehicle as well. So it gives you just that little bit of extra braking power. At the same time, another great asset of four downing is that when you get to your campsite or wherever you're going, you don't have to worry about stowing away a car dolly or a trailer or anything like that. Option number two is a tow dolly. Now the main difference here is instead of having four wheels on the ground, you pull the front two wheels up onto the dolly, therefore leaving just the rear wheels on the ground as you're driving down the road. Option number three is a trailer. You could use an open trailer or an enclosed trailer, but the main difference here is that none of your wheels are gonna be on the ground because you're actually pulling your vehicle up onto the independent trailer. Option number four is chasing. Now, I had actually never heard this term until Nancy, one of our YouTube viewers, brought it up the other day, but I love it because that's exactly what it is. Katie is actually chasing me as we're driving down the road. But anyway, let's go ahead and dive into kind of our story and why we chose the option we did. So how did we end up chasing? Like I mentioned earlier, we fully intended to tow our vehicle four down. But quickly after doing some research, we realized that not all vehicles can be towed this way and our Jeep fit right in that category. So right away, we actually considered trading in our Jeep for another Jeep so that we could four down but we probably were gonna be a little bit upside down and decided that wasn't a good decision. So then that brought us back to tow dollies. Now, part of the reason we wanted a four down in the first place is because we'd read so many horror stories online about tow dollies and people's experiences with them that we were a little worried and frankly, a little scared with it being our first time getting out in RVing of using one. So we started doing more research and more research and then figured out that, you know what? Not all tow dollies are created equally. And we actually found a couple companies, Acme and Demco. Uh, they both actually make tow dollies with advanced braking systems on them, uh, which made us feel a little more uh, feel a little bit more secure with that option. Um, and one of them also makes a um, one of the tow dollies that folds up vertical, so that you don't have to worry too much about storing it either when you get to campsites and things like that, which is pretty nice. Um, but if you guys want to look into those a little bit more, I'll put a couple links in the description box if you want to check those out. Um, but as we came closer to uh, our date to hit the road, we started thinking on it and we just weren't comfortable pulling the trigger, uh, especially based off of just reading things on the internet and all of our forums and things. And we decided, you know what, let's hit the road, let's see what happens and let's meet people who have towed and check out the different ways that they have and see what they've liked and disliked about it. Um, but funny thing happened, we got out on the road and after a couple months, we realized that we actually like chasing. So we're going to go ahead and dive into the advantages and disadvantages of it. So I've always liked getting the bad out of the way first. So we're going to start with the disadvantages. Number one is that the, the biggest disadvantage is that Katie and I don't get to experience the journey together. So as I'm driving down the road and I'm seeing these beautiful views out the big windshield, it's just gorgeous. She can't see that with me and we can't experience it together. Now she does get to look out of the tiny Jeep window and kind of enjoy it, but not as much as me. Anyway, uh, disadvantage number two is that uh, she's not able to get work done while we're driving like she thought she was going to or even take a nap or um, definitely I'm not getting any sandwiches made while I'm driving, which kind of sucks. But uh, Anyway, disadvantage number three is that the pets are separated, um, which isn't that big of a deal. I mean, the cats hang out with me in the RV. They mainly just look out the windows or try to sit on my lap. And then now uh, McNally cruises with her in the car. 
And then disadvantage number four is actually the extra mileage and wear and tear that's put on the vehicle. Um, it's just a little bit more. Um, overall, as far as gas mileage goes, I think it's about a break even uh, compared to her driving the vehicle because it gets pretty good gas mileage versus us actually adding the extra weight and towing it. Um, but overall, that about wraps it up for the disadvantages. Let's move on to the pluses. Let's move on to those advantages. So number one is podcasts and audiobooks. So with me and Katie driving separately, we're able to put on what we want to listen to uh, in order to help pass the time. For me, really, during the Falcon season, I love to have my Georgia Sports Radio on. Um, but if you've never listened to like a podcast or an audiobook while you're driving, uh, you most certainly should. It definitely helps pass the time. Um, I like to look at it as really like I'm kind of watching a movie to be honest with you because as you're listening to it you get so into it that you can vividly see it in your mind. Um, anyway, number two is a drive partner. So Katie's a great drive partner. Uh, for instance, if I need to switch lanes or get over anything like that, I can throw on my blinker, wait to see Katie in my rear view mirror, and know for a fact that I'm clear to move over. Now, don't freak out. I still use the side mirrors and my cameras and all that, but it's just a lot easier to know that she's back there also looking out for it. So it's kind of that, uh, you know, four eyes better than one or better than two but anyway another thing that kind of goes in relationship to this is that katie can drive ahead and let's say we need some coffee or some food or something she can cruise forward and then we'll meet at the next rest stop uh, and neither one of us will have any lag time because she's able to go a little bit faster than i am in the rv so uh that's really helpful uh <laughs> Really funny though, uh, it, when our RV got hit by a semi when I was going to the restroom at the rest stop, uh, if you didn't know that happened, you can check out that video here. But anyway, when that happened, Katie was actually driving forward to get us some Starbucks. So she was probably like 25 minutes down the road uh, when I had to call her and tell her to come back. But anyway, as we move on, we'll go to number three, which is gas. So by not towing our vehicle, we do save gas mileage on the RV. Uh, it's basically a wash though, to be honest, because we still are having to put gas in the Jeep as we drive it. Um, but along the same lines though, uh, by not towing the Jeep, I do think we're uh, saving our RV engine a lot of stress uh, by not having it need to pull the Jeep up a lot of these inclines that we're going to and things like that. Um, so that's a major plus. Um, number four is that when we get to a campsite, we don't have to worry about unhooking our car and dolly and where we're going to store the dolly or anything like that. Or, you know, book campsites that uh, maybe we might be a little worried if we're going to be able to fit the RV, the car and the dolly. Um, but number five is maintenance. So we don't really have to worry about any dolly maintenance or any uh, tow equipment maintenance uh, as we go along our journey. It's just not one of our concerns. Um, now, number six, and this is one of my favorites, and I'm going to call it R. Um, <laughs> R is for reverse. So whenever I go into a gas station, if, say, like I miss the pump for a little bit, I can treat our RV like a normal vehicle, throw it in reverse, and just back up and move forward as much as I want. Or if I make a wrong turn and I need to make like a 35-point U-turn, uh, I can do that going drive to reverse real easy without having to worry about anything behind me. Um, but anyway, that about wraps it up for our advantages. So that's why we began chasing and kind of what we think about it. We do want to mention a couple of things here before we get out of here. Number one is how we travel. So generally when we travel, we drive about four to six hours a day. And when we get to a location, we're generally staying there for about two weeks to possibly two months. Um, so we're not traveling that much and chasing has worked out really great for us. Um, if we were to switch it up and drive a little bit more like every two days or something like that, um, then maybe chasing wouldn't be right. Uh, but Katie's actually shaking her head right now. I think she loves her podcast audiobooks in a long time. So um, who knows? I mean, I think we try to keep an open mind about it. So we'll see what happens in the future. Um, the next thing is in the beginning when we first bought our RV, we did find ourselves feeling a lot of pressure about towing or four downing being the 
really only options to get somewhere is that you had to have your vehicle attached to your RV when you traveled. Um, and I think that's how come in the beginning we didn't even consider chasing. Uh, but as we move forward um, and we found ourselves in the situation to where chasing was the option, um, it worked out great. So by not being able to find a comfortable tow option, we ended up finding the option that was best for us in chasing. Now, I think one of the key components here that we want to talk about is just making sure that you understand that when it comes to traveling with an extra vehicle, the options out there are uh, plentiful and it's really about narrowing it down to what's going to work for you. Um, and if you find yourself overwhelmed or feeling like only one option is the best option based on everything that you're learning and things like that, step back, take, take a deep breath and realize that there are other options out there and you just need to consider them all. Um, but anyway, that about wraps it up for our kind of uh, chasing and what we think about it. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments, we'd love to hear about them. And we'd also love to hear about uh, any experiences you guys have had with Dowling or for Downing or if you chase or whatever options you use to get your extra vehicle with you when you're traveling. Uh, we'd love to hear about it. You know, things that we could consider in the future. And at the same time, maybe your outlook on how you go about it might help someone else who's watching this video trying to figure out their best path forward but anyway don't forget to visit the website mountainmodernlife.com don't forget to subscribe and as always thank you much for swinging by today